Yo, yo, what up, ladies and gents? You are tuned into another brand new banging episode of Behind the Baller. Coming to you live and direct from the Emerald City, a.k.a. the 206, a.k.a. Seat Town. By the way, my name is Ben Baller, not Ben Humble. I am your host. I'm also known as the Korean Liam Neeson. Some of you guys know me as the Forrest Gump of hip hop, but please do not get it fucked up. This is a top ranked podcast and we have won many awards. One of them, which is the best Asian American hosted podcast in the world. With the reigning seven time podcast producers of the year, the almighty Dust Brothers. Yo, this is the weekend wrap up. And on today's episode, we are doing fan questions part one. Part two will be next week. More about that later. Per Listen Notes, that is an analytic company, BTB is in the 0.5% of global podcast popularity. Me and my wife just celebrated our ninth wedding anniversary, 11 years together, guys. I just buried my cousin Rex here in his hometown, and now will trips back to Seattle be tainted? I'm giving away $10,000 and your chances end tonight. Should I do a hangout with Ben Baller giveaway where I take you to lunch, fly you to LA, and let you drive one of my cars? My first set of Project 70 autos are back and for the super duper low. Low meaning low price. Demi Lovato is stupid as fuck. Duh. A basketball rookie card just broke the world record and Vegas Dave is mad. And last but not least, the Lakers washed the Golden State Warriors all that and more on another brand new gang banging shit talking episode of BTB. Miles Davis, Jordan Winters. Let's go. <laughs> So what does uh, 0.5% mean in this podcast shit, right? Well, it means Behind the Baller is one of the top 5% most popular shows out of, are you ready for this? Out of 1,997,403 podcasts globally ranked by listen score you can go to listennotes.com just like it sounds and you will see we are in the top five percent okay out of almost two million podcasts globally this is not a fucking joke like this shit is bigger than just america we are fucking crushing this shit all right you know what i'm saying so stop playing Put some motherfucking respect on my name. R-E-S-P-E-C-K-K-K-K-K-T-T-T. So as I said, I've been in Seattle for a few days now. And I just want you guys to know something. This is something I've been doing since MySpace, right? If I post I'm somewhere um, and I geotag, nine times out of ten, I'm not there anymore. Okay? Because I'm leaving Seattle today, you know what I'm saying, so, you know, whatever, it's, it is what it is, but what that means is, like, when you see me post at, like, a restaurant or some shit, or I post somewhere, unless I promoted that I was going to be there beforehand, meaning I have people, I have forewarning, and I'm, you know, I'm ready for the shit, I'm already gone, I'm not posting, like, oh, shit here, I mean, I'm here at the Americana, I'm here in fucking New York City, boom, like, I'm already gone, I'm not doing that, just for security purposes, it's just what it is, you know what I'm saying, so I've been here since, uh, since Friday, Anyways, you know, my cousin Rex, he, uh, his funeral was yesterday, and uh, it was a very simple 
chill funeral. Um, obviously, COVID is still going on. A lot of things are more open back up. But what's crazy is a lot of places are opened up. But realistically, like all these restaurants are opened up, but a lot of these restaurants don't have restrooms. So, you know, it is takeout. And the places that even have outdoor dining, not everyone has a restroom. And plus, it's very dangerous. You know, you don't know. Can you get the shit from a toilet seat? Can you do what? It's just a fucking a weird situation still, right? Um, One of the good things is I'm getting the vaccine this week, meaning in the next 48 hours, I will have had my first vaccine shot and uh, didn't really have a choice. Uh, you know, so I'm getting the Pfizer. So in two weeks after this week, I'll have the second shot. And that means that the vaccine will be done. Now, even some friends of mine who are from Canada, other people, you know, they're like, oh, you know, this is this and this is that. And there's all these other things. And they're trying to cut. You know what's fucking crazy is no idea where the fuck you guys are getting this from. And look, I've done more research than anybody. I'm not saying I'm skeptical, but I'm smart and I've done things, you know, and, and I've done my research as things. I've already told you guys anything that has to do with fucking autism and, and vaccines have been debunked, right? And everything else. I don't know where the fuck this shit is. And I guess people don't trust the government. That's cool. Fuck the government. I just know what I know when it comes to healthcare and things like that and whatever. And I ain't been wrong. Okay. Not with this shit. And you know, I've been talking about this shit for a year now. Right. And you guys heard it first here. So I'm just letting you know, I'm getting the fact of vaccine. And then, you know, look, I will be doing my thing and be going around here and there. I wish my son could get it. My son, London, who probably needs it the most, but because he has so many allergies, it might not be the best idea for him. So anyways, with that said, I've been in Seattle chilling and I haven't been really going out of nothing. I am staying right by the VMAC. For those of you not from Seattle, VMAC stands for Virginia Mason Athletic Center. This is the Seattle Seahawks training facility. This is where they fucking train, all right? And with that said, uh, this hotel has a beautiful view, as you see in the pictures on the Instagram post. You know, I'm on the lake, and, uh, you know, I'm like, oh, shit, okay, well, I've never stayed at this hotel before. Uh, some of you might be like, wait a second, why the fuck aren't you staying in Seattle, Seattle? Well, because... Um, Rex was buried where his grandparents were buried and uh, that was in Tacoma. So uh, technically Lakewood, Washington is fucking far as a motherfucker. Now, no offense to anyone from Tacoma, but I'm not staying in Tacoma. They didn't even have a fucking three-star hotel in that bitch, right? And, uh, you know, I just wanted to be near the airport. So this was kind of worked out and, you know, when I pulled up, lake, beautiful, didn't rain. It's uh, raining right now, but it didn't rain for the last few days, which is beautiful. And, um, you know, we pulled up to the lake and I'm like, oh shit, you know, my cousin Rex used to live on the lake. So it brought back some memories and just made me feel a little weird, right? And uh, one positive thing was, uh, I see, I ran into DK in the lobby, uh, DK Metcalf of my beloved Seahawks. Very weird. Um, I was, don't really say things like this, but, uh, you know, I was like, yo, it's, it's me, it's Ben Baller. He's like, I know who you are. And I was like, okay, you know, cool. Um, you know, I was just like, just talking and he was like, yo, how come I didn't get the Snickers chain? And then I was like, all right, this is going fucking downhill from here, you know? So anyways, flying here um, was an experience. This is the first time in one year that I've been on a plane. Now, for those of you who don't know, I'm a very organized person. I lay out all my outfits. I am packed three, four days before my trip leaves. I, you know, in 2019, up until about February, 2020, I had you know, a bag, two day bag packed at any given moment. There's always a two day bag packed with my two days worth the toiletries, all that stuff and everything. And, uh, as you know, I was on a plane once or twice a week, every single week for that 14 months. Okay. I had broken my record. And so to have taken that long and not been on a plane is, is, you know, it was a weird experience. So I, baby steps, baby steps, right? I flew out of uh, Burbank, small airport, right? And it's, really actually what is it? It, it no it technically is closer than LAX and just you know less headache TSA pre-check the whole nine right it's it's I'm all legit I got the real ID the whole nine so I get to Burbank airport and I'm not gonna lie to you yo there was maybe 15 people uh travelers 15 travelers maybe in the entire airport it was fucking dead now those 15 people were on the fucking plane the fucking crazy part about it was First class was sold out. Did not look back to see how much the, the plane was sold out. Didn't give a fuck. Didn't care. The flight was, what, two hours and 30 minutes, two hours and 40 minutes. Wasn't bad at all. You know, I'm rocking my N95 mask. Uh, I double N95'd it. Had two N95 filters on my halo mask. You know, um, I wore my face shield. Wasn't taking no chances, you know, and wiped down all the seats with my motherfucking Sono wipes and everything. And just, you know, sat down and chilled. 
had a little meal on first class, had a nice little turkey sandwich, had some um, some chips and some snacks. That's one thing at least Alaska knows how to do. Alaska Airlines will give you some nice little snacks and everything. This wasn't no lay down, bed seat, whatever. It's cool. You know, had my iPad, had my little Wi-Fi, watched a couple movies, chilled out, took actually a little 45-hour you know, nap. And I wake up and uh, we're breaking into the Pacific Northwest. You know, and out of the 100 times, I think that's a fair number, 100 times in the last 11 years that I've been coming to Seattle, there's always been a routine. And out of that 100 times, at least 90 times, my cousin Rex has picked me up from SeaTac, right? So, you know, I'm used to kind of like that routine, right? It's been one or two times I've taken the train. Um, the other times I've taken an Uber. And, um, you know, the familiarity with my cousin picking me up is just something, right? So, you know, you're, I'm flying over CenturyLink. I'm sorry, flying over Lumen Field, right? And, uh, you know, I always see the field. And right when that happens is usually right about the time I text Rex, hey, Rex, man, I'm going over here, boom. So be downstairs in 10 minutes. And I never check in the bag, you know. Um, well, rarely, right? Because I had a, a condo here. So, you know, didn't have to worry about, you know, like luggage all the time when I was coming back here. It was just, you know, more so for Seahawks shit, friendly earth business, things like that. So, you know, it's weird not texting anybody. So, you know, texting uh, my cousin Rex, his best friend of life, his best friend, Byung. And, um, you know, I'm like, yo, bro, I'll be on the ground soon. And I'm just in a weird mood, man, you know, and um, um, I ate on a plane. Uh, m- my boy Byung was going to take me to like a nice uh, lobster club sandwich spot that had like crab, whatever. And it was uh, kind of like, um, what was it like? The fuck is it? Uh, I forgot the fucking town. God damn it, Byung. Fuck. Anyways, it was on the way to the hotel and I just didn't want to stop because like, you know, didn't know how things were going or whatever and didn't want to like, just in case I had to use the restroom or whatever, I was like, you know, let me just get to the hotel. There's whatever. Go to the hotel. Super nice. People are super respectful. Uh, hotel is actually surprisingly very nice for what it was and uh, forced a hotel, but I'm saying like it was, it was nice. Restaurant was open. They had a very special situation where like they had indoor dining, but it was outdoor. There was a roof, you know what I mean? A beautiful view of the lake and it was just Really good, you know, I had, had a nice little Cuban sandwich. I was chilling with my, you know, with, with my boy Byung, chopping it up. I'm just kind of kicking it here. And that's when it became more real. Being in Seattle, it hit me a lot harder, you know. It hit me 10 times harder when I saw his wife and his kids. But, you know, like, it's just a weird thing. Like, are these trips to Seattle now going to be tainted? Like, of course I'm keeping my Seahawks tickets, right? There's no way. But now, like, I don't think I'll ever take his name off the seats. Like, you know, like, I don't, I don't know. It would maybe, I don't know if it's going to take five years, 10 years. I don't know. I just, for the moment, I'm not taking the Rex Yang off the seats. You know, it's just a weird thing. And again, you know, um, I don't need to bring it up all the time, but, you know, I have so many different things that are tied to the city. Um, the only other girl that I've been very serious with, you know, where I was in a two and a half, three year relationship with, she was born and raised in Seattle. It's just I didn't even think about that till recently. One of my closest friends in the Hollywood game when I was DJing and everything else, his dad was one of the people that were part owners of the Seattle. Uh, I'm sorry, the Supersonics, and they kind of brought him over here. I don't know. Just a lot of weird things keep coming up. So, anyways, some of you right now are probably going back and, and thinking about, wait a second, why the fuck did Ben not uh, fly private? Right, and it's a question that people ask a lot here and there. And you know, like I said um, before, um, my boy John, he's uh, running the private jet game and everything. And you know, um, a lot of times, look, man, like right now, currently, I have seventeen hundred unread text messages. So people message me in a crazy with with the giveaway that's going on, and just with my my cousin passing. A lot of people hit me up with condolences. I just don't really like. What happens is, I have nine conversations pinned. If you have iMessage, you know there's a new feature where you can pin the conversations. If it ain't those nine people, I'm just not looking through the messages. I'm going to go through some text messages probably next week, you know, but I'm leaving town again next week in the RV. So, you know, going back to private jets, look, man, for the most part, some of the quick trips like Cabo, and this is pretty much considered a quick trip, right? But Cabo, Vegas, San Francisco, you know, that that's cool. And especially if there's Jets Week goes, I know Jets Week comes here. I don't think they come here from Burbank, but the point is, there's so much I like to do with my money with certain things, with the kids and stuff, right? When I had just London, you know, flying private wasn't a big deal. It was cool. Plus, I had more people to go do certain things with. But now it's like, 
I'm looking at it differently. And I'm not thinking about the 700 fucking plus Bitcoin that I got. That don't mean shit. I haven't cashed on anything. It's just going to sit, right, whether I use it or not. So it just really is a waste of money for me to like, you know, drop what, 50, 60 grand round trip. Like there's just something I could, there's more things I could do with that money. So like when I see people applying private or some people just don't get the exact idea, I'm like, let me put it in perspective. Okay, now show me five people who are applying private, right? Let's say some rappers, entertainers, whatever, boom, influencers, and then show me what their net worth is. And I'd be willing to bet that I was worth more money than them. Now, what does that mean? It means a lot. It means I've just been a little more frugal when it comes to those type of things and flying first class and things is cool with me. Now, if it had been in the heat of the pandemic and he died and I had to go up here, obviously, I would have flown private. It would have been different. Cases are down big time right now. You know, it's a little safer. It's always been kind of safe, but like, you know, I felt cool with it. But like, I think about people who fly private and it's like, yo, man, you don't even own a home. Like, and I have several, like, you know, do you even own a, a million dollar house? You know, to, and, and you're, you're flying private on certain places. Like, it just don't make sense. Like, I seen one of my homegirls, she flew all her crew private from Miami and boom. And the jet was like small, but still, yo, like, you know, that's 75 bands, you know, at, on, on a hookup deal. If it's not, then it's going to be over a hundred. So it just doesn't make sense. Now, going back to my Seahawks, look, man. I'm rarely in Tacoma, right? And, you know, probably the better Korean food would be in Federal Way, right? But I'm not really going down south that far, right? Like, it's just not really my thing. Like, if I'm going to be in Seattle, I'm going to pretty much be in downtown. You know, I'm probably going to be in U Village. I'm going to be in Capitol Hill. And I'll be in Bellevue, right? There's really no reason for me to be anywhere else. Now, when, you know, my cousin was alive, you know, there'd be reasons for me to go to Lake Washington. So I maybe be like by Renton and stuff, whatever, uh, you know, but my cousin's best friend is a solid dude and he's somebody I can see myself having a lifelong relationship with on a, you know, on a real chingu level, right? So, you know, my boy Byung has a has a boat. He lives by Auburn and stuff. And, um, you know, other than that, these trips here will be 99.9% .9 for the Seahawks game. So, you know, we'll just have to see. Is it going to be weird? Boom. You know, going to the game, like, do I need to stay here anymore? Like, look. Now, I've been to a game before where, you know, I catch that 6.45, 7 a.m. flight, get to Seattle by, by 9.30 in the morning, have my little breakfast, chill out, hit the stadium, hit CenturyLink as soon as they open. What is it? Use like 11 a.m., 12 p.m., whatever. And then I hang out for like an hour and a half, go to the pro shop. I could be in there for an hour just buying shit, random shit. Then the game starts at 1, and then boom, when the game ends, I could take the train, go straight back to the airport and fly home and still make it in one day and not have to stay anywhere. Now, most of the reason why I stayed was because, you know, I go out and have some food. My cousin Rex had an Instagram page, um, Food of Seattle. I forgot what the fuck it was. It's not terrible. But he had a really big foodie page. They got 30,000 followers, whatever. And, you know, he's always trying to stump me and impress me with food and stuff. But, you know, for the most part, you know, that was a big routine again. You know, we would kick it, whether we get some drinks in Capitol Hill or something. Now, I don't know if I'm so inclined. Now, if it's an evening game or whatever, yeah, I'm going to stay the night. But there might be a possibility where I'm just flying in just for the games. Haven't figured it out yet. But again, we laid him down to rest. It was a, a tough thing to do, you know, to see my cousins crying, to see my nephew JP and Enzo just still confused, not taking it all in yet, to see Jenny, um, Rex's wife, just, um, you know, in pieces, to see grown men cry. So many people tell amazing stories about, you know, my cousin, like one guy who worked for us at Friendly Earth, he had said that uh, he walked in for a job interview. He had a criminal record. Don't know if it was a felony or whatever. It doesn't fucking matter. Rex interviewed him and is a work at Friendly Earth. And uh, Rex said, hey, man, I'm going to give you a chance. But if you fuck up, you're out of here. And the guy worked his ass off. For $11 an hour, he was homeless, man. And Rex took care of him. And today, he's making over $40 an hour. Just bought his first house, you know, and he's just doing well. And he was just really, really just grateful. And he was crying. And that fucked me up because I didn't know that. But I remember dude worked for us and seen a lot of other people. But uh, it, it was a smaller event. It was more private. There was a virtual uh, funeral as well that was going on, which is crazy because I didn't even know about that. So I don't know, man. But... I uh, had said originally I wasn't going to speak because I wanted this to be about Rex's life and not have any kind of weird thing. And, 
you know, um, but I had to speak. I said my, shared my stories and talked about how much, you know, um, I love them like a real brother, like my little brother. I've never, ever had, a, you know, I was, I'm the youngest of, of my family. So to have a younger brother, you know, it's a different thing, especially, you know, like we're the original Yang gang, you know what I'm saying? Like not Andrew Yang way before that shit. Like, you know, it was, it was just a different thing. So will these trips to Seattle be tainted? Uh, I don't think so, man. But um, it was good to see some people. But, you know, I just kind of kept it just real chill. And uh, I just been kind of posted up in the hotel kind of just going over paperwork, um, going over graphics, going over designs for Project 70 and all that stuff and everything. But um, on Thursday, which I forgot to mention on the pod, last podcast, February 25th is the day that me and my wife went on our first date. And then uh, we kind of like made it official at that time because we had been talking for a month or two. February 25th is the day that we got married. So, you know, next year is our 10-year anniversary. We're going to renew our vows um, I think we're going to do it overseas somewhere. I don't know yet, but it's going to be another wedding all over again. It's a fucking nightmare. Love my wife. And I don't like that. It's just like, you know, like there's just, you know, women, they don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Like some women, they just don't understand the concept of money, but you know, whatever, boom. But like, look, now she wants to like drop some bread. and like, this ain't the time to do it. Even though I got the money to do it, I just, I'm always like, man, come on, you know, I'm a fuck. I still eat McDonald's, right? Obviously, I had the champagne tastes, and I love caviar and stuff. But, anyways, we went on an anniversary dinner. I had like three or four choices. I was like, you know, where do I want to go? And her concern was, she didn't want to go anywhere that was Instagram popular, so that just in case we don't want to bump into people, you know, it was a special day. So, you know, we hopped into SF90 and uh, went down the hill, headed to Beverly Hills. We chose Av- Avra, or Avra, Avra, Avra. Avra is a seafood restaurant in actual Beverly Hills. It is a really nice restaurant. It's beautiful. It used to be a club called Taboo way back in the day. It's fucking crazy. It's DJ. That was like a really, really ritzy nightclub. So this place specializes in fresh seafood. You know, it was my first time sitting, you know, in a restaurant. And like, this is our first time in a date sitting down in a fucking year. Okay. So we're chilling. I parked the car. And as I parked the car, paparazzi's taking pictures of the car. And I'm just like, yo, this is like, really? This like me? Like, you know how fucking irrelevant I am in life? Like, like go find fucking Brad Pitt or somebody. You know, that's important. But um, the valet sees that, you know, they're like, hey, I was like, hey, I need to park this car in front. Like, there's only, like, there's less than 10 of these cars in the world. The guy's like, yeah, you know, I park nice cars all day long. I've never seen this car before. I was like, all right, cool. Can I leave it here? The guy's like, yeah, 80 bucks. And I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I gave him $80. I don't want to deal with it. You know, it's a special day. Boom. So, you know, we sit down, have dinner. I'm not going to lie to you. Food was fucking excellent. Dinner wasn't that bad. Now, again, I'm being weird, right? Because I'm telling you I don't want to spend money here and there. But dinner wasn't bad. We had no alcohol. And I would say dinner was probably like just over 300 bucks, right? Um, so 400 to get out of the house, okay? Um, there were these Chilean sea bass skewers that we have for appetizers that were so fucking delectable, Man, Rex would have loved these fucking chili and sea bass skewers. They're fucking incredible. Um, my wife got a fish dish. I got the lamb. It was really good. Everything was good. It was just, it was chill. Had a great night. No, we didn't try to make baby number four. It was a chill thing. Still dealing with, you know, the kids and just making sure London is good. But yo, we had a really, really, really nice dinner. And it was a decent week, and I needed that. It felt so good to go on a date. It felt crazy. It was really foreign, and I realized how fucking long it had been. You know what I mean? I'm with my wife every single day. It was just crazy that we finally got to have a date. My mother-in-law watched the kids. She was just one of the best fucking in-law. Like, I couldn't imagine having a better mother-in-law than my mother-in-law. You know, even though obviously my father-in-law is the shit because he loves the Seahawks, and that was another reason why I got so deep into it. But anyways... It was a decent week. Um, I don't want to look at it as a negative thing with Barry and my cousin. You know what I mean? He's off to a different place. You know, I feel like he's in heaven. And, and I guess God wanted him there sooner. It's just still a shock to me. And I'm still processing it, still trying to wrap it around my head. Meanwhile, Miles, can we get some of that good lakey lake? Yeah, there we go. Yes. That's my boy Lakey Lake right there, at Lakey Inspired. Yo, guys, we are going to be right back in just a second. We're going to get into this first part of Fan Questions. Yo. 
yo yo so uh guys we are um doing the part one of fan questions the reason why i said part one is because look man sometimes i'm answering questions too long and again i don't look at them beforehand just because i got so much shit during the week you know jordan just kind of sends me the questions now the situation is i asked you guys to do this last week the problem is these questions sometimes take four days up to four or five days to register so when i tell you to do something they might not show up until next week so i'm telling you guys now as of right now monday if you want to be featured on this next weekend's podcast leave questions now go to the ios behind the baller homepage on your iphone on um, apple whatever sign into your name boom leave a five star review in question format and i will answer it so i'm just going to be answering only nine questions today i'm probably going to answer another nine to 15 next week but uh you got to leave your questions because um again weird thing how it takes that long for them to register because i asked you guys to do that on thursday and they don't show up yet which is crazy right all right so let's start off with the first question uh ocho it says uh question anyways Hey, Ben, huge fan of the show. Absolutely love everything you're doing with the podcast. I try to put as many people onto this as possible because who wouldn't want free game? Thank you very much, by the way. My question to you is, what is your five and 10-year plans if you have them? Do you plan on still doing jewelry? How do you plan on expanding your cannabis company as well? Much love, Ben. Kyle from New Jersey. Kyle, very good questions. What's my five and 10-year plan? 10-year plan I do not have. Five-year plan, I will hope to be retired from any traditional work that I have right now. That would include cannabis. That would include um, making jewelry. That would include everything, right? So that would make me 53 years old. And definitely, yes, I would still be podcasting, which would probably make my passive income. And probably with some other, um, you know, my investments and things, I'd be good. But uh, my five-year plan is to have obviously set enough side enough money for london rider and kaya to at least survive into their early 20s okay leave enough for my wife or everything else god forbid there's a living trust um if anything were to happen again to me they'd be taken care of uh i would make sure that the joy business was still good i didn't leave on the bottom i left so that there was somebody who could replace and continue the legacy um, my kids obviously be way too young for that. I mean, London would only be barely, what, 13, 14 years old. So um, that is that. Uh, at that point, I will have hoped to have paid off all my homes and um, have a vacation home, have a regular home, and just be a full-time dad. Really, I, I know it sounds really silly, but yeah. Um, how do I plan on expanding my cannabis business as well? You know what? I just kind of want to keep it boutique-ish right now. You know, we have a great thing with Skypack. Skypack is obviously only putting out the best weed that there is, the best flower and everything. And, you know, obviously still Gary Payton and cereal milk is the shit. There's other strains that are coming out of there. But um, Ben Ball did the strain is more of a boutique exotic thing. And it's uh, it's fire. There's not one single person that hasn't had it and, and just, you know, doesn't love it. But again, Kyle, thank you very much for your questions. More importantly, thank you for telling your friends about this podcast. Um, Johnny Jack P writes, Brother Ben, the mother of all questions. When will you have your mom, Mama Yang, on the podcast? She's the ultimate she -E -O CEO. And will you have your sister, Jean Yang, on the podcast? Um, did you get a SIG P365 holster in multicam? I sent you for your one year BBDTP anniversary. Um, thank you. Have a blessed day. Chiropractor in Tustin, John Park, DC. You know what, John? I just realized you were the dude who jumped onto the clubhouse thing, man. Thank you. I did not get the SIG P365 holster, um, but I do have a amazing SIG P365 holster, which I have right now on me. Um, pretty strange, right? Uh, you guys know that you could declare your firearm and, um, I did that. So I checked in my firearm, declared it, boom forgot to say that before but yeah it's crazy um you know what's really funny is my mom i'd have to really think of some questions you know my mom definitely uh you know came here again i said 200 dollars many times i was wrong she came here with less than 50 dollars okay my mom came with less than 50 dollars there would be a lot of things i want to ask and hopefully she my mom's still pretty sharp you know she's uh 78 now she just turned 78 my mom's 
still pretty sharp? Uh, that'd be a good question. My sister, on the other hand, is brilliant. And I've never really asked. You know, she just, just makes it happen. Um, she's had not necessarily a difficult year, you know, but my sister's in Hollywood. So even with the Golden Globes going on uh, yesterday, which, by the way, I won't be talking about because I don't give a fuck about the Golden Globes. Like, fuck Golden Globes. Fuck all the fucking shits, right? Except, and fuck the Grammys, too. Um, uh, maybe I'll talk about the best album when it happens or, you know, the Academy Awards, Oscars, the best picture of certain things. I don't know. It's not really my thing. That's uh, just not my thing. But yeah, John, very good uh, suggestions. Definitely need to think about um, my mom. Her last name isn't Yang, though, by the way. Her last name's Han, H-A-H-N. And, um, you know, that's a good question. Definitely uh, somebody I should get on the show, and I think that you guys would bug the fuck out. Okay, Ali, the great from that N-O. I'm assuming New Orleans, I don't know. Uh, this is the absolute best podcast in the world, and its quality and production produced by the Dust Brothers is phenomenal. I am a day one listener. My question for you is, I currently work voluntarily for family, not getting paid, but they promise to pay me in the future, but I work seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. Holy fuck. And it's been like this since August, and I got laid off from my normal job when the pandemic hit. Do you think I should stick it out longer with my family because they keep promising they will take care of me in the future? What would you do? Um, Ali, bro, bro, that is 15 hours a day, okay? I, I don't know how you're doing that because even if you're getting six hours of sleep, that means you have three hours. That means you have 30 minutes to get ready for to, to go to work and 30 minutes to get ready for bed, which leaves you two hours randomly to maybe, who fucking knows? Like, Jesus Christ, that's a lot, bro. Now, as far as pay, if they're paying you $15 an hour, that's a good amount of money. I don't even know what you do. I wish you told me what your family does and what you're doing there. And I'm hoping you're just, you know, sitting at a gate and chilling. I don't, I don't know. That's, that's that's a lot of fucking work. I uh, really apologize for you being laid off your job. Um, as things start to open back up, I really do think you need to find some kind of job that, that pays you. I don't understand how you're paying bills. Or, I mean, maybe you live with your family. I don't understand. What I want to know is that why have they promised to pay you and they haven't? That is just kind of weird, right? The future, uh, August, let's see, so it's September, October, November, December, January, February, March. That's seven months, my, my dude. Seven months now, right? Like, I would say, you know, tell them, hey, look, I'm going another two, three weeks, and then, yeah, I got to go look for real work and hopefully you get unemployment for somewhere else. I don't know. That is a tough position, bro. Do me a favor, Ali, I hope you hear this now. Leave the question um, again and tell me what you actually do for them and what kind of business it is. I appreciate it. Uh, next question is, Mr. Pedro, oh yeah, Mr. Pedro, Mr. Pedro R. writes, Uncle Ben, Pedro Ramos from Fresno, California. Thank you for your life knowledge, day one listener. So I am getting married this November in Cabo, I wanted to ask, what are your favorite things to do while you and your family are out there? Also, my family has a Mexican restaurant in downtown Pasadena called Anaya's if you're ever looking for some fire food. Brother, I love downtown Pasadena, so I am going to look that place up. Is it uh, Anaya's? I'm going to look for that spot up, okay? Now, when it comes to Cabo, I've been going out there for a long time. Look, man, I love riding ATVs. I love fucking going on boats out there. I love fishing in Cabo. I love going to Nixon. My favorite, I love going to Edis to go eat. I love going to the office and getting my motherfucking enchiladas. Love having my fucking huevos rancheros in the morning and my just my eggs. I love having eggs and fucking beans and just hot sauce. And I just like kicking it. I don't really fuck with mango deck, none of that. But any kind of water sport type thing, I like riding jet skis, you know. But the ATV things, being in side by sides, those are fun as fuck, man. I love doing that. Um, got to ride dirt bikes last time I was there, uh, you know. But for the most part, you know, we just I just like getting the tan, being in the water, chilling, you know. Even in the pool, you know, I like staying in my little five star resort out there and chilling. But uh, I love Cabo. Been going to Cabo since the nineties, man. So. Uh, congrats on your wedding. I thought you were going to invite me to the wedding. Goddamn. I was like, oh shit. But uh, it's funny, man. I was talking to my wife um, last night about going to Cabo. So, hey, 
we might motherfucking see you there, Pedro. And I definitely will try to check out Anaya's, anybody else that is in the Pasadena area, San Gabriel, LA, Hollywood, whatever. Go check out my man, uh, Pedro's family's restaurant called A-N-A-Y-A apostrophe S. All right, y'all. Uh, Erod 2K writes, I'm always intrigued. I like this podcast because you never know what to expect on what topics he will be talking about. It could be weekly news, celebrities, personal life, or how to better yourself. Definitely my top podcast choices and always listen at work. Um, it makes things easier at work to considering how much the work environment has changed with this pandemic. Appreciate the free game. My question is, what is the meaning on gold when it says 14KC and 14KN? And should gold just say 14K to be more pure? Uh, recently bought two small pieces and they both say one or the other. Let me be completely honest with you. I don't have a fucking idea why your gold says 14KN or 14KC. I have never in my entire life heard 14KN, okay? Now, the only thing I can think of, it is an alloy designator. Not exactly sure, but I'm sure. But I would be willing to bet it's just 14 fucking K. Now, remember, 14 karat gold means it is 0.585% gold, right? So that means it's 55.5% gold. A lot of times when people hallmark the back, sometimes people just put 585. So you just know it's 58.4, 0.585, right? So it's 58.5% solid gold, right? Meaning um, it's over 50% gold. Now, what other part of metals they use? That might be the N, that might be the C. Not exactly sure. Never heard that before in the entire time I've been a professional jeweler. But, you know, um, uh, yeah, it should just say 14K or 0.585. Those are the two most common. And it uh, doesn't even make sense. Now, 18 karat is obviously 0. 0.750, which means 75% gold. And uh, how Rolex does it with their rose gold, what they do is, the, and the reason why every rose costs more than, like if you look at the gold prices, Rolex rose gold always costs more than white gold or yellow gold. Reason being, they mix their rose gold with platinum. So you're getting 75% gold, and 25% platinum, and that's why it costs so much more money. And obviously, there's 22 karat gold and there's 24 karat gold. There's never going to be point, you know. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. There is. Usually in Asia, in certain areas, there's 0. 0.9999, but in America, 24 karat gold would be 0. 0.999, right? Parts of India and parts of China, you'll see 0. 0.9999. Platinum is the same way. All right. Uh, 415 to the 206. What are the chances? That, uh, Jordan, did you pick out motherfuckers just only from Seattle? This is weird as fuck, right? Because I'm here right now. Anyways, 415 to the 206 writes, Go Hawks. Appreciate all the free game and a glimpse into your personal life on the podcast. Love the stories you have with different celebrities. You know, my question to you is, if you could own any sports team, which sport and why? Now, sports team or which sport? Okay. If I could own any sports team in the world, it would obviously be the Los Angeles Lakers. It'd be no question. Like, I mean, why? It's my hometown. I couldn't fucking imagine. I, like, you know what? I don't really think about, you know, I answer questions. Like, oh, what's your dream? This and dream that. What? Shit. It was never an option or anything I even fathom of doing. But, you know, obviously this is a dream question. And fuck it, I don't play along. If I could own the Los Angeles Lakers, like that would just be fucking insane. I would have the control over everything on, I mean, as far as like, you know, having pick in the front office and, you know, having say with the coach and, and you know, just, it would just be, it would be insane. Like, you know, and I wouldn't be sitting in the private box and that, fuck that shit. I would want to sit on the floor every night. I don't give a fuck. I would attend the practices. I'll be, you know, just involved. I wouldn't be meddling and just being, you know, weirdo, but I would be chilling. And I would, I mean, I guess, no, you can do that. I was going to say, I would just be, you know, I wouldn't let anybody know I own the team. I'd be a corporation, but then people would figure it out, right? Um, it, it'd be the Lakers for sure. No doubt about it. No, no offense to the Seahawks and shit and everything. That'd be dope, but it's different because it's in my backyard. I, it would just be fucking, it would It would actually be a, an incredible dream. Never thought about it. Never been asked that before. But now, if it came to what sport would I want to own a team in, again, 
it'd be the basketball, man. That's my favorite. You know what I'm saying? It's period. Uh, good question, man. Never been asked that before. Craig Butts, 52, writes, great show. Behind the Ballers, one of my favorite podcasts. I really appreciate Ben Ballers' candid monologue and his love for the culture without being a vulture. Ben Baller, the Korean ambassador. Uh, ben Baller, do you rock with the Gumball 3000 and would you do one in the future? Additionally, post-COVID, I think you would or you should organize a coast-to-coast rally for charity. I'd love to be a part of it. Um, I rock with Gumball 3000. I got a lot of friends who are in it. Um, I forgot what the, the CEO's name is, Tim, whatever. I know my, my homie Eve is married to him. He's a good dude. He follows me. Great guy. Um, the thing is, it's just, and I know it's a great experience. I just, I'm so engulfed in being a dad that anytime I get away, that's like a, it, it's Gumball 3000. It's a long commitment, you know? Um, I'd consider later, later, later. Like, I think maybe when Kaya's like, 17, you know, and the other guys are older, and that shit, that would put me at, holy fuck, 14 years now, that would, be, that would put me in the early 60s, hopefully at that point, I'd still be fucking kicking ass in the cars, now, putting together a Coast to Ghost rally for charity would be fucking amazing, I would love to do that, I'd have to figure it out, I don't know exactly how many people are involved in Gumball 3000 as far as cars, but it'd be fucking sick, right, I'd have to figure something out to where it'd be comfortable, I mean, maybe a Porsche Turbo, a Porsche Turbo S, like a 992. I mean, who knows back then? But like doing something in the near future, that would have to be the car that I'd rock with, right? Like you just keep just enough shit in there. Or maybe like a RS6 Avant, you know, like a that's the Audi RS6 that just barely came over here in the station wagon. That might be it. That might be it. Good question, Craig Butts. Um, so funny, I just see this comment here. It's the first negative review I've ever seen out of, you know, thousands of reviews. And the guy's name is Juniper Creek, whatever, it doesn't matter. 100% is a Trump supporter, biggest fucking loser in the fucking entire world. It's fucking hilarious, right? And um, it's just funny because like people like this, man, <laughs> just, just they already know that their lives are miserable. All right. Uh, Gustavo DLR writes, what would it cost to make your California chain nowadays with the increase in price of gold and diamonds? How much did it cost to make back then? Is there a price you would sell it for currently? To be completely honest with you, in 2007, that California chain really cost me like $330,000, right? I said like whatever number, stupid number I did, but uh, it, it cost like $330,000 back then. It was 330 carats. You know, there's princess cuts involved, custom princess cuts. There's ice blue diamonds, which cost a fucking shitload because they can only be VS plus and really, really, really high end. Um, the labor... It was fucking uh, over a kilo in gold. And then there's a gigantic fucking chain that goes with it. I don't know now. You know what, man? Honestly, I mean, it's worth, it would, I, I don't know. It's easily double that right now. You know, um, the labor and all that shit and what's going on now. If I were to break down, let me see. We'll do this live. Fuck editing. Fuck all that shit, right? Let's just do this live right here. Okay. So just, oh shit, hold on. What the fuck am I talking about? Hold the fuck on, because I forgot about the Cuban that's on there. So let's just do that. So just in gold alone, in raw 18 karat gold, uh, to make, it would be probably about 200-ish. So 200,000 just alone in the gold, okay? So now let's let's get to the diamonds, right? Uh, so about another... $350,000 in diamonds easily, no problem. Now, are we going to get into the labor and everything? I mean, this is to make this motherfucking thing today, it's going to be fucking 800 grand. It's going to be way too much motherfucking money. I would take half a million for it because it's just been sitting around. I don't give a fuck. It's not really that big of a deal, but I would definitely take that much and just be done with it. All right. Last question for fan questions part one of this weekend wrap up is from at I am Chris Cheek. Sorry, I said Chris Creek. What's good, Ben Baller? First and foremost, I'm a huge fan of the podcast, and you provide me with a lot of motivation and inspiration for my life with your story. Anyways, I currently own a 2011 BMW 335 M Sport. I was wondering what you thought of those cars. I was potentially thinking about trading in for another used luxury sports car or a nice luxury SUV. What do you recommend something in the 2010, 2013 range under 16K? I know you probably don't look at used stuff too much, but I was hoping you had some recommendations. By the way, if I could get some of those stickers for my MacBook 
or some sort of merch, um, I would love it, LOL. Funny story. When me and my wife first started dating, she had a 2010 BMW 335M Sport. And you know what's funny is my wife's car is really cool. She had like a little dining chip that my father-in-law got her and um, she had an exhaust on there. It was actually a really, really cool car. Now that I think about it. So fucking crazy just thinking about that far back. What do I recommend under $16,000? I don't have a single fucking clue. I would, I, I don't even know. Like honestly, I don't even know what in that uh, year range would be at that price. I wish I could, you know what? Chris Creek, do me a favor, man. Or Chris Cheek, sorry. Do me a favor. Ask this question again so I can look up some things between those ranges. But again, man, you know me. Like, I like cars under 10,000 miles, um, 15,000 at most and certain things. But let me look at a couple, you know, BMWs and, and Benzes and see what's in that area. And what is wrong with you trading your, I mean, why would you want to trade it? You know, like, if anything, I'd tell you to go get a 2013, you know, C63, but I'm sure that those things are going from more than 16 grand. So, you know, tough to say, don't know. Now, as far as merch and stickers, my brother, I am selling merch this week. It is going up with my autos. So uh, continue to listen to this episode and I will tell you what's going on. But yeah, we're dropping some shit this week. Yo, guys, that is it for fan questions. Miles, you already know what to do, brother. Uh, throw me some of that LL and we'll be right back. Yo, yo, what up, guys? We are back. And for those of you who have been living underneath a sombrero and have no idea what's going on in my life, uh, I am giving away $10,000 cash. There's no gimmicks, no games, no fucking around. This has uh, been something that's been sponsored by somebody. And uh, I partnered up with Platinum Giveaways. And if you go to at Platinum Giveaways Official, you will see that they are following 40 accounts I think a lot of people don't know how to read instructions, basic rules, simple things. Doesn't make sense. I don't know why. Go to my latest Instagram post. You will see a video where I speak about giving away $10,000. There is a grand prize of $5,000, and there are two other prizes for $2,500 each. Like I said, people right now could be using this type of money during these times, and I am legitimately giving this money away. How do you win? What you do is you go to at Platinum Giveaways Official. There's 40 people that they're following. Follow all 40 accounts. There are so many fucking people that I've gone to their accounts and, and checked. They are not following all 40 accounts. Okay. You have to make sure your page is not private so we can check and see that you are following those 40 people. If your page is private, you are not going to win. So you got to unprivate your page. And make sure you are following all 40 accounts. And on top of that, then you got to make sure you go to my page and comment done. Okay? We are going to pick a winner this Friday, March 5th. Stay tuned for details here and on my Instagram stories, everything. Listen, guys, you have until midnight tonight, Pacific time, LA time, Seattle time. You have until midnight tonight to comment. So I wouldn't waste get time. Look, I'm, I'm, look, don't waste time. Don't start playing games. This is the real deal. I will be really giving away $10,000, okay? So follow the 40 accounts that Platinum Giveaways officials is official is, is following. Comment done on my page, D-O-N-E. That's it. You don't need to tag for other people. You can actually write done 100 times. The more chances you write done, the more chances you have to win. You tag in 500 different people. I never asked anybody to tag anybody. No idea why the fuck people are tagging so many people. All you got to write is D-O-N-E. I don't understand where the other shit came from, all right? Okay, now, speaking of contests, I mentioned something on my Twitter the other day, and people went fucking crazy. So I was playing with the idea of, with Project 70, you saw I gave away a micro Jesus piece, by the way, to, um, I think it's Daniel Wright from Chandler, Arizona, that is shipped out now, so you should be receiving that, or you should I already have by now. I was thinking for one of my big cards, fuck it, why not, right? I've taken the vaccine. Uh, we do some proper safety issues. So I don't think this would work for somebody overseas 
because most people from out of the country can't come into America, even though for the most part we're open, but um, we're really not. It's a weird thing, right? So I haven't figured it out yet, but most likely for those of you who live in the United States of America or maybe Canada or maybe Mexico, right? So let's say North America, okay? I'm going to have a contest where whoever buys, you know, one of my tops Project 70 cards, I don't know what card I'm going to choose yet, but you buy a card, and if you buy 50 cards, you get 50 chances. You buy 100 cards, whatever, boom. The winner will receive a paid trip, meaning if you live in Toronto, if you live in Miami, if you live in fucking Tennessee, I will fly you to Los Angeles, okay? My personal assistant will pick you up, right? I will put you in a hotel somewhere, you know, safe and clean, right? And uh, we'd go to lunch somewhere, somewhere cool that made sense, outdoor, boom. And then at the end of the whole hangout time, which I think realistically, look, it'd be a 24-hour trip. Anything after that, that's on you. You want to extend your trip? Go right ahead. We can figure all that out. I would just take care of getting you to L.A., making sure we got lunch somewhere cool, and making sure you got to drive my car for a little bit. So realistically, it'd probably be a 90-minute situation where we had lunch, chopped it up a little bit, and then you got to drive the car. Maybe two hours at most. But this is a big fucking deal because 70-something percent of people rather do this than get an iced out, you know, Bitcoin chain or whatever the fuck it may be. So this is going to happen. All right, guys? Speaking of Project 70, I am dropping my Mookie Betts autos this Thursday, okay? This Thursday at, uh, let's just say, 10 a.m., I did a special thing this time, right? There's only 21 cards, okay? Now, out of those 21 cards, 18 of them will be either blue or silver autos, okay? They will say BBDTC. I am for the first time ever selling these for $175. That is the fucking lowest I have ever sold an auto ever. And I'm just doing this for the greater good of the hobby. I'm putting these out, 18, that's it. There's going to be 21 cards for all 20 players that I choose, and that's it. Now, the other three cards will be gold autos, okay? Now, ready for this? These are going to be priced very, very, very low, all right? The one of three gold Ben Baller autos will be $711, okay? That is beyond the lowest I have ever done, especially for a one of three. There'll be no one-on-one. There'll be no other thing, whatever, boom. And you know what? From time to time, I might throw in a rainbow refractor in there. So just know this Thursday at 10 a.m., I'm dropping my special autos, my first set of the Project 70. Obviously, they will be Beckett certified with the authenticity card and all that. Now, also, on BBDTC.com, where I drop all my exclusive shit, I'll be dropping merch packs. Now, in this merch packs, for $25, you are going to get a Ben Baller lighter. You're going to get a BBDTC Sharpie, okay? You're going to get a sticker pack. So I'm going to put a pack of stickers in there, you know, all nice. And you're going to get the exclusive 80% alcohol Ben Baller sanitizer spray. The best fucking sanitizer there is in the world. So that is going down this Thursday at 10 a.m. Do not sleep. All that shit sells out, and I'm only selling 100 packs, so they will go very fast. All right, guys? All right. So my Lakers, um, you know, I felt like they were in trouble. Took an L this, uh, what, two or three L's? Two L's this week? Anyways, last night, they washed the Warriors. It was great to watch. Um... I never hated the Warriors, right? I've said that before. I love for them, right? Whatever. And I thought stuff was dope. But, you know, now, like, I don't know, man. Something about Steph just rubbed me the wrong way and whatever. And I just don't think he's ever going to get a chip again. Like, that's it. Like, I'll bet against it, period, all day long. They need someone bigger to do it. It just ain't going to happen. But uh, it was dope to see the, you know, my Lake Show wash the Warriors the fuck up. Uh, you know, we got the All-Star Game weekend coming up. And uh, after that, it'll be the break. And I just think that we ain't got time to play games anymore, you know? Uh, fuck the all-star game, don't give a fuck about it, um, but I do care about what's going on with the Lakers, and, you know, 
I uh, obviously been preoccupied. I watch the games and stuff. It's not too much to analyze. But, um, you know, I'm here in Seattle and uh, here for a funeral. So, again, I'm just really not going to... I still haven't deep dived into it, like, super hard, right? Because it's just still fucking weird with what's going on, right? We don't have a real point guard and just... I mean, I fuck with Caruso, but now that, like, it's... Like, we really depend on him. Like, it's just weird, right? And fucking... I wish fucking LeBron would fucking pass the ball to Montrez a little bit more. I don't know, but I'll get a little bit more in-depth into that as we go along. Uh, okay, Demi Lovato. <sighs> Man, there's some things that I do want to say, but I can't because on a private level, it would put me, my security in jeopardy. And again, I'm, I'm not scared of nothing. It's not. I'm not scared of Demi at all whatsoever. It's just... Look, man, she's an easy target sometimes, right? Just like, I guess some people right now want to pick on Meek Mill or like some other people. But like, look, you know, okay, cool. You did heroin, you did crack, whatever the fuck it is. You overdosed. You know, I didn't know you had a stroke and a heart attack. You know, when you're a young girl, you're still in your 20s, right? You're a successful, whatever, boom, you're a massive fucking platform. Cool. I don't know any of your music. I don't really fuck with you like that. Look, man. All this shit that's going on with trans people and transphobia and all this other shit, look, I get it. You know, you should protect trans people, you know, and there's certain things you should do and whatever, and and, and um, they're a unique crowd that should be taken care of. Look, Demi Lovato went on her page and said, you should not, people should not post gender release parties anymore because it's transphobic and it's hurtful to trans people. Okay? Bitch, you done took it too far. All right? Like, you are all the way tripping. Okay? I don't give a fuck how offended people are. I mean, oh, because you're not. Fuck you. To everyone. Don't ever, never in your life. And if you can't have a kid, don't nobody give a fuck. Life don't life ain't fair. Sucks. This is a harsh way to say this, but there ain't no other way to really say it. I'm grateful, gracious for everything that's happened, gracious for my kids, no matter how many issues, health issues that London's had. Look, you can never, ever, never, never, ever. You should never, ever, never, never. Never, 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 never tell a mom what she can celebrate or not celebrate when it comes in regards to having a baby. All right? That is one of the greatest, if not the greatest, accomplishments a human can have. And some people can't have it. And you have my condolences. But guess what? For those of you who do have children, imagine someone telling you, you know what? You should maybe chill on. D Fuck that. Okay? You done gone too motherfucking far on this one. If you go to her comments, her comments are in shambles. Usually someone says some shit about trans, whatever, boom. And then think, look, trans people will fight back. This right here, you're bugging. That Mr. Potato shit, that was some old whatever bullshit that Hasbro made a, a retraction. I'm like, no, Mr. Potato Head is not leaving. We will make a general neutral. Y'all fucking crazy, okay? Y'all can fight over potato heads and all this other shit. You could fight over bathrooms. Look, gender release parties, which I don't even give a fuck about a gender release party, but you can't tell no fucking mom or dad how they can't celebrate the birth of their future child. You're bugging okay could you fucking imagine if i started telling people look man you know what i just relate to you know i'm filipino i'm black i'm not really you know i yes i'm korean you know by ancestry.com you know yes i'm uh technically i'm korean but no you know i don't identify as that i identify as filipino and black so that's what i'm gonna be because science isn't enough and fuck science no bitch fuck you all right so just had to say that. Um, that's it for the show. I had a great time doing this episode. You know, I could scream and yell and shit. I'm in Seattle and fucking in my hotel room. 
It's one thing I love about fucking professional podcasting. You could do that shit anywhere, right? And um, let me just remind you guys real quick that uh, I will be on Clubhouse and I will continue to put my foot on these fake gurus' necks. I'm surprised Timothy Sykes, his stupid dumb ass ain't on Clubhouse fucking lying to people and doing some fucking scams. I don't even believe the motherfucker's Jewish. My motherfucker's such a fucking clown, man. But yeah, you know, there was this dude who called out uh, JT Fox and called out that dude Brad um, Hager or whatever. And there's just all kinds of dudes just fucking clowns, man. It don't add up. And you know what? Keep calling out all the frauds. During the fucking pandemics is when people, like fraud is just the highest because they know people are vulnerable. What kind of piece of shit cocksucker can you be to do that to people? And I'm so sorry for the people that are under 16 listening to this show because I met some of my fans this weekend and they were young. Look, I apologize. You know, this is parental advisory, but look, I appreciate you guys listening. You know, I keep it real. Now, before we go, let me remind you one last time that the Dust Brothers at DB Podcasts went a perfect 7-0 and against the spread. They went 7-0 and against the spread. They are on fucking fuego fire with their NBA handicap picks. So make sure you hit at DB Podcasts. They're not fucking around. They're even winning motherfuckers parlay money, all that stuff. I love you guys so much. I cannot tell you globally. You guys mean so much to me. That is why I want to do this forever, right? Over jewelry, over anything else, okay? Please continue to tell your friends about this show and keep me number one in more countries, right? Let's motherfucking hit the Vatican City. Let's hit everywhere. Let's hit Iceland and this bitch, Estonia, all that shit. Okay, guys. All right. God bless you. I'll be back on Thursday. Don't forget, big release on BBDTC.com this Thursday morning. That'll be before the episode drops. So just stay tuned. You know what I'm saying? Stay blessed. Stay lit. That is it. Yo, LL, Blakey, take us out of here, bro. Peace.